An unusual ash cloud from Ethiopia made its way across parts of India on Monday, not from a dust storm or pollution, but from a volcanic eruption nearly 4,500 kilometers away. The source is Haile Gubi, a shield volcano in Ethiopia's Afar region, which erupted on 23rd November. What makes this remarkable is that this volcano has been dormant for nearly 10,000 years. When it erupted, it sent a massive plume of ash nearly 14 kilometers high into the atmosphere, which is roughly at the cruising altitude of a commercial aircraft. Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Somya Pillai and I'm here to explain how a volcanic eruption thousands of kilometers away from the Indian subcontinent became a cause of concern for India. What is this ash cloud, how it traveled the distance, and what could be its possible impact? This video will answer all those questions, so stay tuned. So first of all, how did ash from East Africa reach India? When a volcano erupts explosively, it shatters magma and surrounding rock into microscopic fragments. These particles are not soft like fireplace ash. They are sharp, abrasive fragment of volcanic gas, pulverized rock and crystalline minerals like silica, feldspar and pyroxene. Mixed into this are volcanic gases such as sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide and water vapor, which rise along with the ash due to intense heat and buoyancy. The finest particles, often smaller than 2.5 microns, can remain suspended in the atmosphere for days or even weeks, allowing high altitude winds to transport them over long distances across continents. In this case, strong upper atmospheric wind carried the ash cloud from Ethiopia across the Red Sea, the Arabian Peninsula and Arabian Sea and finally into parts of western and northern India. By Monday evening, the ash plume had crossed Oman and entered the Indian airspace. Weather models and satellite tracking showed impact over regions including Gujarat, Rajasthan, Delhi NCR, Punjab and Haryana. India's weather and aviation agencies tracked the plume using satellite imagery, volcanic ash advisories and atmospheric dispersion models. Now, why was this a cause of concern? Because volcanic ash at cruising altitudes is dangerous for aircraft. The tiny glass-like particles can melt inside jet engines, stick to turbine blades, block airflow sensors and significantly reduce visibility. This is why aviation weather offices issued special warnings and adjusted flight paths leading to some cancellations and rerouting between Monday evening and Tuesday morning. But for people on the ground, there's some relief. Although the skies appear darker and hazier in some parts, experts say the ash is concentrated between 25,000 and 45,000 feet above ground level. This means that it is unlikely to have any meaningful impact on surface air quality. Any ash fall, if it occurs at all, is expected to be extremely light and localized. This was particularly to clarify because large parts of northern and northwestern India are already experiencing poor air quality and such an event had started worrying residents about an added impact. In fact, by Tuesday evening, meteorological models indicated that the plume will gradually start moving away from the Indian airspace and head eastwards towards China. So while this was a rare and striking geological event, the ash travelling thousands of kilometres from a long dormant volcano in Africa, its main impact in India remained in realm of aviation and atmospheric sciences, not in public health. That was all from me. I am Samya Pillai and you were watching The Print.